più trai farfalloni amoroso notte giorno di torno girato Hi, my name is Roy I'm your friend and uh, we've, we've met before, haven't we not? I think so and uh, I'm coming to you today from my office at Apavia in uh, Romania where I serve as a missionary and uh, yesterday I celebrated my seventh anniversary of being married to my precious Romanian bride. Her name is Melania. I was born in New York City and she was born where? Well, nobody knows where she was born. She was born in the remote area of the nation of Romania in a little village that nobody ever heard of. Uh, she was born in a home without, without electricity and without plumbing. And uh, you know the rest of the story without electricity or without plumbing. But uh, I just want to say this is a magnificent woman that a man born and raised really in New York City should have found really a, a woman in the middle of Romania that became my wife. I lost my first wife after some years, 30 years actually, and I spare you the details, but um, it was a horrible, horrible time in my life where I struggled with depression, despondency, yes, and despair and defeat, the, the four D's uh, we call them, depression, despondency, despair, and defeat, I've got that down pat, and uh, I laugh at it now, but at the time it was absolutely horrible. I'd been a pastor in uh, the state of New York and uh, really at this time I had to resign my pastorate. My children were gone so I couldn't live in that same house with all the memories with everything so I put the house up for sale and eventually sold it and I moved to Virginia with my uh, sister and my brother-in-law. They took me in like a, like a homeless man. They took me in and uh, really through their kindness I was nursed back to health. But during this time, having had the active life of a pastor and then uh, really a uh, very quiet life, no telephone ringing constantly, no preparing for the next sermon or the youth conference or the children's ministry or the finances of the church or the board meeting or ad infinitum, the busyness of the pastoral life. And I had a lot of time on my hand. And unfortunately, a lot of that time was uh, nursing my woundedness and feeling the feelings and I, I, I knew that God would work all things together for good. That was my, my confidence, that was my faith, that was uh, my, uh, my experience in the past and I knew that God would do it again. I just didn't know how. That didn't remove the feelings of the depression and so on but it was on a different level of assurance. And uh, the church that I began to attend with my uh, brother-in-law and sister did mission trips. So I said, well, not doing anything, may as well get out of the soup of my despair and go with them. So I did. They went to Peru and Romania. I tagged along with them and uh, uh, I spoke a little Spanish, so I, I really enjoyed my time in Peru and ministry there. And dear friends, in one week of ministering in Peru, 
we as a team were able to pray for 400 people in one week with the focus of receiving Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Well, wow, I was so overwhelmed that I left my post of responsibility, which was the post of spiritual assessment, went behind a building and sobbed, sobbed, because of the sheer ecstasy and opportunity that God afforded. And I thought, well, I'd be willing to spend the rest of my life, I was 60 years old at the time, I'd be willing to spend the rest of my life here working amongst the Peruvian people. We went back to the United States and the next trip was to Romania to build churches for the Roma. We uh, use the word gypsy people and they had a separate village outside of the Romanian village and we were there too. Build a church. So I want you to know that uh, I have a degree in physics and mathematics, you know, and I'm reasonably intelligent and at least well educated and I uh, thought, oh, well, they yeah, give me a good job and they did. They gave me the job of having to mix mortar and taking nails out of uh, used wood so that the wood could be reused. Oh yeah. And I set myself up a station and I was glad to do it. Uh, I really was. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, there was a Romanian leader by the name of Ionel Tutsak. And uh, he took a liking to me and he invited me to come back and work with him. And uh, you know, I seized that opportunity. Came back to work with him and that was a splendid, wonderful time. He invited me after three and a half months to come back again, which I did the following year. We're talking about 2004 now. And that year, he sent me throughout the nation. I mean, I lived out of my suitcase. I was preaching, I was having a good time. I was really functioning in the area for which I was placed on this earth through horrible tragedy and depression. God was working to bring me into the place of my destiny. He invited me to come back in 2004 and then I knew that I knew that I knew that my next earthly assignment would be here in Romania. I didn't speak Romanian, I spoke Spanish, but God gave me the grace to learn Romanian. You want to hear John 3.16 in Romanian language? Atut de mult a iubit Dumnezeu lumia ca a dat pe singru lui fiu pentru ca or cine crede în el să nu piare ci să aibă viața veșnică. 2004, I took my retirement uh, from uh, my church uh, where I served and uh, bought a piece of property, which is now Apavia. And after six years of being single again, God brought into my life a beautiful, wonderful woman. And may I say, I'm not perfect and neither is she perfect, but by God, she's perfect for me. And uh, these seven years have been some of the most fruitful and happy and, yes, challenging years of my life. But I want to give thanks to God for His mercy, for His forgiveness, for His love, and for His restoration that I, who really was retired, got rehired, refired, and uh, that's the rest of the story. My name is Roy, and I'm your friend, and I'm celebrating my seventh anniversary. God bless you. See you next time.
Goodbye. Carmeloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle turbine.